In this video, I wanted to look at something that I thought was kind of interesting and a little bit ironic concerning the Legacy Standard Bible. And this is the Legacy Standard Bible that I have up here. This is the rendering of John 1.14. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's actually a pretty familiar rendering. It sounds a lot like other traditional translations when you hear that verse. But it was interesting to me. I was looking at something, and I saw something that John MacArthur says in his study Bible. And I'm actually going to show his note from the MacArthur Study Bible in the New American Standard Bible edition. And it is a note on this verse on the phrase, Only Begotten. And this is what MacArthur says. He says, the term only begotten is a mistranslation of the Greek word. The word does not come from the term meaning beget, but instead has the idea of the only beloved one. It therefore has the idea of singular uniqueness, of being beloved like no other. By this word, John emphasized the exclusive character of the relationship between the Father and the Son in the Godhead. It does not connote origin, but rather unique prominence. It was used of Isaac, Hebrews 11:17, who was Abraham's second son. So what I wanted to hone in on is that he actually says that the term only begotten is actually a mistranslation of that word, monogenes. And yet in the Legacy Standard Bible, it does translate it as only begotten. The other interesting thing, and again, kind of ironic, is that the New American Standard Bible, the 2020 update, I'm looking at here, says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Actually, this translation matches more, I think, what MacArthur was saying, because the term only begotten according to what he said there in the study notes, is actually a mistranslation. Now, I think what he's really trying to do there is push back on people who, who misunderstand the term begotten, and there are probably some sects, even cult groups, that misapply this term. I'm not sure that he's saying it's, it's completely wrong to translate it that way, but just looking at what he said there in the study notes, he does clearly say that there's a better way to translate this, is, is what I see here, because the term only begotten isn't technically what the Greek word means. Another thing that we can do is actually go to the Blue Letter Bible definition here that's given, and it does say here that uh, it does mean single of its kind only, it has a couple of sub-definitions, used only of sons and daughters, used of Christ, denotes the only begotten Son of God. That's interesting that that's how the Blue Letter Bible puts it. Now, Abner Chow, who's involved with the Legacy Standard Bible, does have a video talking about why they translated the term only begotten that way in the book of John. He's specifically talking in this video about John 3.16. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I'll play a little bit of it just so you can see kind of how he starts to go about this. And then if you want to listen to the entire thing to hear his whole statement and argument, I'll leave a link to this video in the video description below. Why does the Legacy Standard Bible retain only begotten in its translation of John 3.16? Like I said, this is a really great question and I empathize with it because we know how the cults have abused and misused the phraseology of only begotten to wrongly insinuate that Jesus is created or made. That is completely false. And so I can understand our desire to want to translate it something like one and only or the only one. That's a quick and clear conclusion that you can draw from a translation. And there's definitely room for that for that very reason. But part of what is in translation and particularly with the Legacy Standard Bible is to communicate what the text says and also through that to be a window into why it says fully what it says. It's a platform for theology in that way. All right, I'm going to stop there and just kind of point out here that what I kind of hear him saying 
is that it actually would be valid to translate the term as one and only, or only son, something like that. But they have chosen in the book of John regarding Jesus to translate it as only begotten. And it sounds to me like it's really for theological reasons, which is interesting. And I think a really interesting thing that goes along with this is if you look at the Legacy Standard Bible in Hebrews 11:17, when it talks about Abraham, it says, He who had received the promises was offering up his only, it doesn't say only begotten there, and yet it's the same term in Greek. So I understand uh, why they did this on one level, and again, watch Abner Chow's video, you can see why they did. I don't think anybody's saying you can't translate it as begotten, although John MacArthur did say it's actually a mistranslation, so that seems to be moving in that direction. I guess you could say it's a good thing that MacArthur didn't have so much influence that he could just uh, say, no, you can't translate a word this way, it has to be my way. On the other hand, I'm just curious as to how this really ties into their translation philosophy, because what you're seeing here in John 1.14, the term is translated one way, but in Hebrews 11.17, it's translated a little bit differently. And from what I understand, their translation philosophy was seeking to be very consistent in how they translated terms. And I understand they may have some theological reasons for doing that, but at the same time, it seems like what they have been saying is that the Legacy Standard Bible, part of their theology is that they're not trying to infuse uh, an agenda. They're actually trying to say, this is consistently what the terms mean in the original language, and that's how we want to translate them in our language. Now, this gets into something that I have said on my channel before, that when it comes to my personal preferences, I tend to either want something that's very traditional or something that's modern. And I'll show you here traditional Bibles, traditional translations, the King James Version, the New King James. You can see here that in Hebrews 11:17, they do use the term begotten. What I like about historic translations is that they're not trying to be traditional. They're just doing what they do. This was how they chose to translate the term. The problem I have with modern translations, like when you get with the Legacy Standard Bible, is I think on one hand they're trying to be contemporary. At the same time, they're also weighing tradition. And I'm sure people are going to have arguments uh, and say some different things in the comments. Feel free to do that. But personally, for me, I like traditional or historic translations because they were translating words in a way that was the best scholarship, the best understanding of that time. But I want a new translation to give us the best wording for the, the way we understand the words now, the way that we would actually say that's what that word means in Greek, what does it mean in English? Now, I will say, in, in kind of defense of the Legacy Standard Bible, the first word in the translation name is legacy. So, yes, it is trying to carry on tradition, and I, I, I would have to admit that. But I think what you get into here is kind of like an inconsistency that in Hebrews 11:17 they don't use the term begotten. John 1:14 they do use the term begotten. And it's not because of a difference in the Greek word underlying the text. It's really a theological point. Now, if I'm missing something on all of this and you want to point that out in the comments, you can do that. I'm not really trying to be critical. I just thought this was really fascinating and interesting. And I'm sure that the uh, LSB is going to be used by a lot of people. It's going to be very helpful and edifying for biblical study. But I think, once again, it shows us that sometimes we can have really strong opinions about things, arguments about things, and yet, really, there can be layers to some of the issues that we're talking about. So even when John MacArthur, in his... MacArthur Study Bible says that the term only begotten is a mistranslation. You can see that that's not necessarily going to mean that they're going to get rid of that, that translation because it is historic, it is traditional, and it does actually convey some theological things that are worth looking at, and that's what Abner Chow talks about in his video. So that's all. I just wanted to share some of this with you. I thought it was an interesting topic. 
I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section. But thank you so much for taking some time to listen to some of my thoughts on this from a fresh perspective.